Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Today we are going to talk about well issues we have for asynchronous counters. Here I have prepared already something. Let's see how we think in our ideal world this is working. Every time here C toggles, yeah, going from 0 to 1. So at this edge, this edge, this edge, edge uh, Q0 will toggle. So every time here, zack. Here, zack, here, zack, here, zack, 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 zack. Yeah. Every time we have a rising edge here, Q0 will toggle. Okay. Every time we have a falling edge on Q0, Q1 will toggle. Right? So every because then this is going one, it will toggle this one. So we will toggle here. And here, and here, and here, and here, we covered this. Yeah? And now, every time this is toggling, yeah, Q2 will toggle, yeah? going down. Every time this is going down, we'll go up here. Zack. Toggle. Yeah? And what with Q3? This is talking, of course, every time this is going down. So we have here, zero, toggle, later in time, we are talking. And if we interpret this as, as, as binary number, this is working. We've covered this. Yeah? This would be in our ideal world. Oh, is okay, looking good. Yeah? However, in the real world, yeah, we don't have immediate switching. We have a little bit of latency. Okay, so here this Q0 will not switch here, so, but with a little bit delay, always with a little bit delay. It's the switching time of the element. With a little delay there, and so our first. signal will switch with one delay time of that element, one switching time of that element. So here, this here, is the switching time switch time of the element, all right? So now actually we will toggle, this here would toggle here, but we add a second switching time, yeah? We will toggle here, toggle here the next one, toggle here the next one, yeah? But we add a second switching time because this element also has a switching time, so we are so it would look like that. We are later again. Alright. Next one. Every time we would switch here. But we add an additional switching time. This is not red, this is red. And the last one I also draw. Huh? Add additional, additional switching time. And look at that. Originally, in our ideal world, we would have switched here, eh? but now, in our real world, we switch a lot later. Eh? And look, here we always have the right counter value, always. Eh? It's, it's the right counter value. But here, what if we look here, yeah? at this moment in time? The counter value should be, let's see, we take this moment in time. 
the power counter value should be 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah? And here I take the precise same moment in time. Here I have 0, 1, 1, 0. Totally different. This has nothing to do with the real counter value. Yeah? So this is an issue, these running times, especially if we have big counters, not just four, yeah? big counters with a lot of digits. Yeah, then it really takes some time. Or you want to count, count very fast. Yeah? Then it's also an issue. This is good. Yeah? If the counter is stopping, everything is fine. Yeah? We need some time. The end value is correct. Yeah? But at some point in time, I cannot, I cannot tell. I can only tell afterwards. Yeah? Or in short time windows, yeah? I can tell what the counter value is. If the counters are getting too too long, too much much digits, or too fast, we want to count too fast, then I cannot tell during counting whatever. It's just bit pattern which is appearing, yeah? but no counter value. This is an issue. This is an issue of asynchronous counters. So uh, there's a solution to this. Yes, the solution is called synchronous counters what synchronous counters are and how they are working and they are not that different yeah? but we will see in next video next video synchronous counters for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye